Not a lot of people burning up Nick Maynard's phone to try to get a matchup. With Ngannou! Oh! Goes the Reeb! Francis Ngannou has arrived! Francis Ngannou. Five times he put his opponent to sleep. There are a few ways to finish the opponent in the world of mixed martial arts. Submission, KO, TKO, or disqualification. One punch knockouts don't happen often, but when the predator is in the octagon, you know it's a matter of time. Francis Nagano's average fighting time is less than 5 minutes because he hits like a Mack truck. Every single punch could be nighty night for the opponent, and this brings a whole new level of excitement. The heavy handed Cameroon champion has become a fan favorite and will gladly pay to watch his fights due to his powerful Mike Tyson style punching. Let's jump right into the action. Here are 5 times when Francis turned the lights out on his rivals. Number 5. Luis Enrique, UFC on Fox 17. Nagano arrived at the UFC with the record of 5 and 1. His only knockout before inking the contract with the greatest MMA promotion in the world happened versus Bilal Tatahi in 2014. The Cameroonian boxer was unknown back then, and many believed he was a submission-oriented octagon warrior due to his three submission victories. Francis' UFC debut brought a whole new level of excitement. An average striker with poor kicking skills and a questionable ground game seemed like easy prey for dangerous Brazilian mixed martial artist Luis Enrique. Enrique was riding a six fight winning streak, while Nagano was coming from MMA Factory Paris, pretty much an unknown dojo at the time. The first round didn't go well for Nagano, as he had no solution for Enrique's consistent pressure and clinch game. Francis spent the majority of the fight pressed against the cage, unable to defend the opponent's one underhook in and over under. It looked like a mismatch in the first round of the bout. Francis was unloading a barrage of heavy bombs on Enrique from time to time, but was unable to rock the Brazilian. You can call the first two minutes of the second round very boring. Enrique was pushing Francis against the cage. When the Cameroonian powerhouse finally set himself free, he attempted to land a big left hook on numerous occasions. But Brazilian's right hand was too much of a challenge for Nagano. But a creative fighter will always find a way to the opponent's chin. Francis saw that his foe kept his hands wide, so he attacked with a left hook and created an opening. He followed up with a right uppercut that dazed the Brazilian. But the third strike of the combo was a magical left uppercut to the chin. Enrique fell like a sack of potatoes, and Francis finished the battle with his trademark standing hammer fist. What a welcome to the UFC. Number 4. Alistair Overeem, UFC 218. After a series of back to back stoppage wins, Francis Nagano was set off to fight against dangerous striker Alistair Overeem. UFC slated the fight between the Cameroonian powerhouse and the former Dream K1 and Strike Force champion. Overeem was a kickboxing and wrestling clinch specialist who destroyed former 265 pound belt owners Andre Arlovsky, Brock Lesnar, Junior Dos Santos, and Frank Mayer. Interestingly, despite Alistair's previous wins, the heavy handed Cameroonian was a minus 233 favorite for this fight. Francis was an undefeated UFC fighter and contender number four back then. As soon as the fight started, it was clear that Francis' strength was too much for the legendary Dutchman and number one contender. Overeem attacked with the running left hook as soon as the bout started, but Nagano ducked under. Alistair then tried to shoot for a takedown, but was unable to drag Francis to the ground. As the Cameroonian heavy-handed bomber remained on his feet and pressed Overeem against the fence, punching the number one contender with a series of rabbit knees and foot stomps. Dan Mergliato saw enough and restarted the bout at the center of the ring. Francis blocked weaving overhand right, then fainted with the right hook to confuse Overeem. The Dutch kickboxing artist raised his hand to protect himself. But then, out of nowhere, the brutal left hook catapulted Alistine Overeem into another dimension and ended the battle. Of course, 
Francis finished via right hammer fist, but the demolition man was out before his head touched the canvas. Let's take one more look at this left hook. I mean, just perfect on the chin. Wow. Number three, Cain Velasquez, UFC on ESPN1. Francis significantly changed his fighting style upon arrival to America and started switching stances. After two back-to-back -back losses to Myochik and Lewis, the Predator was heavily criticized by UFC President Dana White for his lackluster performance. It left us wondering if UFC head Honcho bet his house on Francis UFC 226, win over Derek Lewis, which ended up as one of the worst performances in the history of this sport. 11 punches. Yeah, 11 punches in 15 minutes. Angry Nagano was determined to win the hearts of his fans again. After a three round snoozer against Lewis and turned the lights out on Curtis Blades after 45 seconds, the match against Velazquez was the ultimate test for the heavy handed Nagano. Velazquez landed a middle kick to kick off the bout. Francis missed with a big weaving overhand right. Thanks to great footwork, the first African 265 pound belt owner evaded a few more kicks from the former division champ. Kane tried to go for a takedown but Francis countered with a quick one-two and delivered another short uppercut off the clinch. Velasquez ended up on the canvas and Francis unloaded a combo of violent hooks to end the battle. Jason Herzog waved off the contest after 26 seconds in round one. Yet, this knockout was controversial as Velasquez blamed a buckled knee, not violent clinch punches for his lackluster performance. Of course, the Cameroonian heavyweight slugger disagreed and kindly asked Kane to look at the video again. Uh, you know, some um, there were there were a lot of unhappy people yesterday with that uh, with that fight. You know, so they just they always want to uh, find something to say. But uh, what did he need uh, better? It was a, a shot under his, his chin. So my punch, my punch land went, uh, before his knee. Right. So he was a, he was a knockout. He just fell on his knee. But he was not uh, doesn't matter what they say. It's clear there is the video out there, and they can check out. Of it. Although it did look like Brown Pride's knee did buckle, it was the power shots from Nagano that made him go down. Number two. Jarzinho Rosenstrike, UFC 249. An undefeated dangerous Surinamese kickboxer looked like a big challenge for the powerful Cameroonian one-punch knockout artist. Many fans expected a barn burner and a potential knockout finish from Rosenstrike. As he previously stopped Junior Albani, Alan Crowder, and Andre Alovsky, and stole the victory over Alistair Overeem in the dying seconds of round five. But there was only one man standing in the octagon 17 seconds into the fight, Francis Nagano. After two light low kicks to the legs of Francis, the slugger rocked Jarzinho with a devastating overhand right. Rosenstrike was retreating, but Nagano smelled blood and unloaded a barrage of hooks on a dazed opponent. The ref intervened too slow, so Francis landed a few more strikes on his opponent to secure the victory and sent Rosenstrike to La La Land. Number 1. Stipe Miocic, UFC 260. Francis tried to dethrone Miocic in the main event of UFC 220, but Stipe's wrestling was too good. Despite some heavy fists to the chin, the former Olympic wrestler remained on his feet survived the onslaught and kept the Nagano on his back for the next 20 minutes. It was the first loss of Nagano's career and the pressure was enormous. Yet, training sessions with Dewey Cooper was highly beneficial for the hard-hitting expert from Cameroon. It led to an improvement in kicking skills, which proved to be too much for Miocic, who felt the power of Nagano's low kicks. Dewey also taught Nagano the importance of patience which helped him grate the left high kick to the chin. At one point in the match, Francis stuffed the takedown and ended up on top of the turtled Miocic, unloading a barrage of hooks to the temple. 
So many fans thought Francis would be gassed at the beginning of the second. But the muscular 265 pound knockout machine, the all time greatest heavyweight fighter lost the belt in a split second. There you have it folks, that was 5 times the legendary predator put his opponent to sleep. Who's the next in line for the fight with the heavyweight Cameroonian puncher? John Jones demands more than 8 to 10 million bucks for this clash, while Nagano is keen on Derek Lewis rematch. Are we going to see another violent knockout in the heavyweight title bout? A fist to the chin good night? Maybe it's going to be a face plant KO after a powerful fist to the temple. Who's gonna be Nagano's next victim? Make sure to tell us which was your favorite knockout in the comments below. And we value the opinions of our audience. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss our hard hitting fight content. By knockout and new undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Francis the Predator and Thank you for all the support for everyone who has been behind me and basically for my team who helped me to get here.